The year is 2001. Wikipedia would launch. The first ever iPod came out. And a block on the Cartoon Network channel would be created. Airing animated and live action series to target an adult audience. This block would be called Adult Swim. Now let's go to 2024. Where Adult Swim is one of the most well-known television programming blocks. With it also being a separate channel in Canada and the entirety of Latin America. With it also taking over most of the Cartoon Network channel, airing for about 13 hours in total. So this is the history of the adult programming block on Cartoon Network, Adult Swim. Before this video begins, please subscribe to this channel. I work on these videos and I'd appreciate it if you did, but you don't have to. Also, I have a second channel, so if you like extra content or analog horror-esque content, then please check it out. Links in the description. Also, I have a Discord server. If you want to suggest video ideas, you want to contact me, or in general just want to hang out there, then please join. Link is in the description. Also, if you notice any mistakes in this video, let me know in the comments, on the Discord, or on Twitter. Anyways, let's get into this video. While the block launched in 2001, we need to go back to 1994, where Cartoon Network's original head programmer, Mike Lazo, initially conceived Adult Swim. The idea for the block grew out of Cartoon Network's previous attempts at airing content appropriate for adults who potentially were watching the channel after 11pm. Cartoon Network began to experiment with late night programming, airing anthology shows that presented uncensored classic cartoon shorts. One of Cartoon Network's first original programming, called Space Ghost Coast to Coast, created in 1994, was made for late-night adult audiences by Lazarus production company, Ghost Planet Industries, now known as William Street Productions. In December 2000, while Space Ghost Coast to Coast was on hiatus, several new William Street series, including Sea lab 2021, Harvey Birdman and Attorney at Law, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and The Brack Show, made unannounced stealth premieres on Cartoon Network in between 4 and 5 a.m., when being listed as special programming on the schedule. Prior to that, Michael Oaline stated in Entertainment Weekly that his next project was working on the Harvey Birdman Attorney a Law pilot with J.J. Sedemir. And in a 1999 interview with indie pop rock band Calamine, they stated that they had recorded a theme song for C-Lab 2021. Then, while hearing about pitches for a variety of adult cartoons, Lazo realized potential packaging them into a complete adult focus block. Lazo would consider a few names, such as Ibizo, Parental Warning, and Parental Block, but he would settle on Adult Swim. Initially, Cartoon Network intended to launch the block on April 1st, 2001, but it was delayed for five months. In June 2001, TV Guide had recorded an interview with Betty Cohen, who was Cartoon Network's president at the time where she stated that there was going to be a new programming block coming out in September that was aimed for adult audiences. During that month's Cartoon Network Confidential, an upcoming episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, the stealth pilot from December 2000, Captain Lingerer, and an episode of Home Movies were screened for free, with the screenings being a part of the Toyota Comedy Festival. In July 2001, during San Diego Comic Con at the Space Ghost Coast to Coast panel, the organizers of the panel hosted a trivia game in which the winners got a promotional CD that had the theme songs to upcoming Adult Swim shows. Everyone who attended got a free Adult Swim t-shirt that was packaged to look like a roll of bandages that a lifeguard might carry. Also at Comic-Con, audience got to see clips from upcoming shows and got to vote on what show they wanted to see as a sneak peek, with Harvey Birdman, attorney at law, winning with the pilot being screened. Leave it to Brack and Space Ghost Coast Coast was also screened. On July 25th, 2001, in an interview with CreativeMac.com, J.J. Sedemeyer talked about working on the Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law pilot. Then, on August 12th, the first commercial advertising Adult Swim aired on Cartoon Network. Around the same time, a press kit came out featuring towels and a promotional CD. Another press kit later came out, which was designed as a first aid kit, which came with a promotional VHS with information on all the shows. Access Hollywood would also highlight upcoming premieres. In August 2001, print ads were shown in that month's issue of Entertainment Weekly. On August 31st, 2001, AdultSwim.com would be registered. Post could not here. Usually I leave this note on the screen, but this time I decided just to come in here and just say it was actually registered in 1999, but the website went up in August 2001. So yep, sorry, quick correction. Anyways, get back to the video. Then on September 2nd, 2001, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Adult Swim would officially launch. 
with the first program aired being home movies, which was originally supposed to air on the United Paramount Network, but was shelved before it could air. With according to Linda Simonski, we had a bunch of episodes to screen for Mike Lazo. And by only the second episode of Home Movies, he yelled, buy it. Cartoon Network would order the five original episodes that were supposed to air on UPN, and then ordered eight new episodes to complete the season. The first anime to air on the block would also air the same night as his launch, that being Cowboy Bebop. The Adult Swim would initially air on Sunday nights from 10pm to 1am, with a repeat of the same block on Thursday nights. With the original blocks featuring people swimming in pools, eating, exercising, and doing other pool-related activities. Having signs around the pool saying stuff like, Warning, potential violence. Warning, strong language and use. Caution, sexual innuendo. Caution, limited animation. No diving, no kids. Warning, adult situations, and more. Some bumpers were narrated by a lifeguard using a megaphone. Most notably, he would say all kids out of the pool. The logo at this point was the words Adult Swim in red capital letters. On September 7, 2001, Showcase Action would launch after getting approval from the CRTC to launch after almost a year at that point. Going back to Adult Swim, two days later, on December 9th, Aqua Tween Hunger Force would debut on the block. During the winter of 2001, Another Adult Swim CD was made available for free to anyone who purchased the 28th issue of Hitch magazine, with the CD coming in issue 29. On February 21st, 2002, Adult Swim stopped airing on Thursday nights. Two days later, on February 23rd, 2002, a Saturday block called Adult Swim Action would launch, with various anime programs displayed on the block from 11pm to 2am. Programming on the block was divided between Adult Swim Action and Adult Swim Comedy, with Adult Swim Comedy being the Sunday block airing from 10pm to 1am. The same day, Adult Swim changed their logo to black lowercase text. Then in June 2002, Adult Swim had their first contest called the Adult Swim Happiness Sweepstakes, where winners would win a Master Shake air freshener. In September 2002, Adult Swim obtained exclusive pay TV syndication rights to Futurama and Family Guy for a reported $10 million. With Futurama airing on the block in January 2003, with reruns of Family Guy airing in April 2003 on Adult Swim. It was very common for Adult Swim to act as a home for reruns of shows that have been cancelled, which these two shows were cancelled. Other shows picked up by Adult Swim that were cancelled by other networks would include Home Movies, Baby Blues, Mission Hill, The Oblongs, The Ripping, Friends and God, and Devil and Bob. Family Guy would become the block's top-rated show, dominating late-night viewing in its time period when compared to paid television and free-to-air competitors. Family Guy would also boost the blocks and Cartoon Network viewership by 239%. Fox, seeing this on top of the increased sales of DVDs for the show, would renew Family Guy and order new episodes of the show in 2004. On New Year's Eve 2002, Brack from the Brack Show and Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force hosted a New Year's Eve event from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. That was the first time Adult Swim aired on a Tuesday night. On January 13, 2003, Adult Swim would start airing five nights a week, Sundays through Thursdays. On February 9, 2003, following an NBA All-Star game, Adult Swim aired on TNT on a block called Adult Swim All-Star Extravaganza as a one-time special from 11 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. In October 2003, Adult Swim would begin to air from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Also in October 2003, to be exact, October 26, Brack's dad from the Brack Show hosted Halloween-themed bumps. The same night, Adult Swim hosted a live webcam show on their website featuring the Adult Swim staff having a party. The Big Go series finale was supposed to premiere that night at 11 p.m., but they had to reschedule the episode for the next week, November 2nd, which is when the unaired Family Guy episode, When You Wish Upon a Weinstein, was supposed to air. The Family Guy episode was moved back to November 9th, and the Big O series finale aired on November 2nd after a joke from Adult Swim, where they aired the Big O episode strike for 38 seconds, then switched to the finale, The Show Must Go On. Then, Adult Swim had another New Year's Eve special in 2003, 
featuring some of the Adult Swim characters having a party at Brack's house celebrating New Year's Eve. The same night, Adult Swim would cancel the Brack show. In March 2004, Adult Swim would hype up viewers by asking viewers to vote for who could win a fight, a flying shark or a flying crocodile. Also in March 2004, a year after it began airing reruns on Adult Swim, Fox would announce that it was renewing Family Guy. Jim Samples, who was the general manager and executive vice president of Adult Swim at the time, would say bringing Family Guy to the Adult Swim lineup last April really helped turn the block into a cultural phenomenon with young adults. In April 2004, the first April Fool's joke would happen, with all of the regularly scheduled programs being aired with random mustaches drawn on the characters in the programs. This tradition would continue for the coming years. Also in April 2004, Adult Swim regained Saturday nights, making Fridays the only days where Adult Swim did not air at that time. In June 2004, Adult Swim would launch a video on demand service. Then in July 2004, Adult Swim did a publicity stunt telling viewers that it needed 1 million people to go to their website so they can quote unquote free hockey chicken. Those who did go to the website would see an employee that was dressed as a chicken in front of a webcam, with the employee not being able to leave until they met the goal of 1 million people on the website. In fall 2004, Adult Swim would start a course at Kent State University with lessons from film professor and author Ron Russo. Then on Halloween night 2004, actor Angus Scrim hosted an Aqua Teen Hunger Force marathon. Then, two days later, on November 2nd, 2004, Adult Swim ran a marathon of the Harvey Birdman episode, Guitar Control, all through the night until 2am. The episode played a total of 24 times to celebrate Election Day. Then, 26 days later, on November 28th, 2004, Adult Swim had a week showing off classic bumps from the previous years. In February 2005, Adult Swim would partner with Midway Games to make games based off some of the Adult Swim shows. In March 2005, Turner Broadcasting System, the owner of Cartoon Network which owns Adult Swim, began recording Adult Swim's Nielsen ratings separately from Cartoon Network for demographic purposes. Also in March 2005, Adult Swim gained an extra hour of airtime, ending at 6 a.m. EST instead of 5 a.m. EST. Then in October 2005, Adult Swim would start at 10 p.m. on only Sundays, with Adult Swim continuing to start at 11 p.m. on Mondays to Thursdays and Saturdays. In 2006, Adult Swim's start time on weekdays was changed to start at 10.30 p.m. Also in 2006, Adult Swim would introduce online video streaming, providing a free online video-on-demand service for recent and older episodes of select programming. On January 31st, 2007, the famous 2007 Boston Moon Knight Panic would happen. Now, there are hundreds of videos which goes into this, but let's quickly explain what it was. In 2007, to promote Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters, a device depicting the Moon Knight characters you see on screen sticking the middle fingers were placed in multiple cities. But on January 31st, 2007, a civilian spotted one of the devices above the Sullivan Station in Boston, mistaking it for a bomb. The civilian told a nearby police officer about it, causing bomb squads to be called. Most of these devices would be destroyed, and this incident would attract national media attention to Adult Swim. A day after the incident, two men who were linked to the incident, Peter Rodolfsky and Sean Stevens, would be arrested on the charges of placing a hoax device to incite panic and disorderly conduct. Bird of Sky planted some of these devices before the incident, including the one above Sullivan Station. On February 5th, TBS and Marketing Interference Inc. would announce that they'd pay $2 million in amendments. On February 9th, Jim Samples, the president of Cartoon Network, would resign because of the incident, being replaced by Stuart Schneider. In July 2007, Adult Swim would extend to seven nights a week, beginning to air on Fridays. In October 2007, the Adult Swim block would become HD with the launch of Cartoon Network HD. In November 2007, Burdovsky and Stevens would be sentenced to 80 and 60 hours of community service for the charges of placing a hoax device to incite panic and disorderly conduct. Also in November 2007, the first game from the deal between Midway and Adult Swim would launch, that being Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro AM. 
In January 2008, Alliance Atlantis, the owner of Showcase Action Broadcasting Assets, were acquired by CW Media, which was a joint venture between Canwest and Goldman Sash Capital Partners. Also in January 2008, a second Adult Swim game would come out. This one was not published by Midway, but was published by Capcom. The game was based on Harvey Birdman, Attorney of Law, and would be called, well, Harvey Birdman, Attorney of Law. In December 2008, Adult Swim would move its start time to 10 p.m. every night, with reruns of Canada Hill being broadcasted in the hour starting January 1st, 2009. In 2009, Showcase Action was renamed to just Action. In 2010, Action was acquired by Shaw Media as a part of its acquisition of Canwest. In late 2010, Adult Swim start time was again going from 10 p.m. to 9 p.m., making the total runtime of Adult Swim being 9 hours. In 2011, Adult Swim began requiring TV Everywhere authentication for most episodes on the website, greatly reducing the amount of free content. Also in 2011, Action had begun to diverge from its original format, increasingly acquiring reality shows from the US network True TV. For the 2012 April Fool's jokes, Toonami, a Cartoon Network programming block that aired anime programs and that was dead for four years at that point, would be revived just for the day. The programming block will be fully revived in May 2012 following a positive response to April Fool's joke. In July 2012, Cartoon Network Canada would get their own Adult Swim block. In 2013, Adult Swim, under the Adult Swim Games publishing label, would launch a game on Steam called Super House of Dead Ninjas. They would continue to publish select indie games on Steam. In March 2014, Adult Swim start time would be moved to 8 p.m making the block run for 10 hours. Although, between 2014 and 2022, Cartoon Network, primarily during the months leading up to Christmas, would take back the 8 p.m. slot, making Adult Swim start at 9 p.m. again. In 2015, an HD feed of Action would be launched. Also in 2015, Adult Swim launched the Virtual Brain Load, the first animated VR experience from a TV network. In 2016, Shaw Media was acquired by Chorus Entertainment, making action a part of Chorus. In 2017, Pete Smith, a longtime producer at Adult Swim and co-creator of The Brack Show, retired from the company. On that night, Adult Swim celebrated his career with an all-night marathon of the shows Bob Burgers and, of course, The Brack Show. Also in 2017, Adult Swim began an ARG campaign. I won't go to it here, so I suggest watching this video from Red Herring about the ARG. The link to the video will be below. In 2018, Adult Swim acquired their first game development company, Big Fish Studios, being the developers behind one of Adult Swim's games, Pocket Mortys. Also in 2018, Adult Swim will begin losing the syndication rights to various 20th century television animated series, with Comedy Central acquiring the rights to King the Hill and The Cleveland Show. In 2019, AT&T announced a major reorganization of Warner Media's Turner Broadcasting Division, which involved Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, Boomerang, and Turner Classic Movies being transferred over to Warner Bros. Entertainment under a new Kids, Young Adults, and Classics division. Also in 2019, Chorus announced that Action would be relaunched into a 24-7 channel for Adult Swim. Because of this, the Teletoon block, Teletoon Night, as well as the Cartoon Network and the block for Adult Swim was discontinued. The channel would launch with a two-month free preview in April of 2019. Also in 2019, Mike Lasso, the creator and president of Adult Swim, would retire from the company. The former CMO of Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, and Boomerang, and co-creator of Harvey Birdman, Michael Oalin, being named as the new president of Adult Swim, in April 2020. In November 2020, Big Pixel Studios, the game development company for Pocket Mortys that was bought by Adult Swim in 2018, would close down because of Warner Media's larger transformation. Then in December 2020, Keith Crawford, the general manager for William Streets, would retire from the company. In April 2021, April Fool's events held by Adult Swim would also begin to be streamed on the official YouTube channel starting with Adult Swim Jr. April Fool's Joke on April 1st, 2021. Also in April 2021, Warner Media would announce that HBO Max's adult animation development team would merge with Adult Swim. 
On December 18th, 2021, after an 18-year-long run, Family Guy, a show that was practically saved by Adult Swim, would leave the channel after losing the rights to air it. As a note, Family Guy is still airing on Adult Swim Canada. My only guess is Chorus, the company that owns the right to air Adult Swim in Canada, is able to air shows like Family Guy as they have a deal with Disney and air Disney Channel, Disney XD, and Disney Junior in Canada which gives them access to Disney's airing library. And that's how they're able to continue to air shows like Family Guy. But hey, that's just a theory. In October 2021, Adult Swim began to air certain programs in a compressed format, speeding up programs to accommodate additional time slots for advertising, sales, and airing credits in a split-screen format similar to TBS. Then in November 2021, Adult Swim would regain the rights to air King of the Hill on top of gaining the rights to air Futurama. In May 2022, following WarnerMedia's devisement by AT&T and the merge between WarnerMedia and Discovery Inc. to form Warner Bros. Discovery, the Warner Bros. Global Kids, Young Adults, and Classic division was dissolved. With Adult Swim being moved under the Warner Bros. Discovery Networks, meanwhile William Street was moved under Warner Bros. Television. Despite this, Uoline is still the president of both Adult Swim and William Street, with Uoline becoming the president of the Cartoon Network, Boomerang, and Discovery Family. Because of the WBD merger, several Adult Swim shows were moved from Adult Swim's website and HBO Max to cut costs, while other series were written off for tax purposes. In May 2023, Adult Swim's start time was moved to 7 p.m. on weekdays and Saturdays, making the block run for 11 hours. And again, in May 2023, it was announced by the CCO of Warner Bros. Discovery U.S. Networks Group, Kathleen Finch, that adults will be given the 6 p.m. hour starting later in the year. The change being officially confirmed to be happening in June 2023, with a change occurring in August 2023. With the hour on weekdays going towards a new block under Adult Swim called Checker Pass, which features reruns of classic Cartoon Network series. In August 2023, it was announced that Adult Swim would begin to air at 5 p.m., expanding the block to 13 hours. Following the expansion, Acme Nights, a Sunday night movie block, was moved from Cartoon Network to Adult Swim. Also in August 2023, it was announced that 24-7 Adult Swim channel would be launching in Latin America sometime in October 2023. In September 2023, it was announced that the True TV Latin American channel will be replaced by the Adult Swim channel on October 31st. And finally, on October 31st, 2023, the Latin America 24-7 channel for Adult Swim would launch. And I think that's it. If you want to suggest anything that I forgot to add, then suggest it either in the comments, on Discord, or on Twitter. But anyways, that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you want to. Again, you don't have to, but I would much appreciate it. Join Discord if you want to. And until I upload again, later.